ask, when will the bloodshed end? But the media does not blame gun manufacturers alone for the violence. All those who possess firearms must share in the guilt. Responsible gun owners and those using guns recklessly or to commit crimes are lumped together in a single group. Notice how investigative reports edits footage together to insinuate that hunters are linked to urban street violence. There is a war on the streets that is killing our children. Ultimately, the media supports a revolutionary campaign to abolish the right to keep and bear arms. Further complicating the lives of police officers is a new issue, the arming of the general public. Gun violence has increased dramatically in every sector of our society, but most alarmingly, with children. As a culture of violence persists, its backlash has teens caught in a crossfire. With so many guns in the hands of mostly untrained civilians, officers have no idea what they might face when they respond to a call. It's a recipe for disaster. The media's message is clear. Americans will be a lot better off without guns. The expression gun control is dishonest because we're not talking about controlling guns so much as we're talking about controlling the law-abiding segment of our population. The defining characteristic of a criminal, after all, is that he does not obey the laws, and gun control laws are no exception. Anytime you have a measure which has the effect of disarming the law-abiding, you're giving criminals a competitive advantage over the law-abiding segment of our population. And the media doesn't display much if any interest in reporting what happens in those instances where criminals go into an encounter with a citizen with the serene confidence that the citizen has been disarmed. That's a story the media just does not want to tell. The mainstream media continues to portray the arrest of Rodney King as a gang of racist police beating a black victim. It began, as we remember, after white policemen were seen on videotape beating a black man named Rodney King. Well, four white police officers in the beating of black motorist Rodney King. Captured by chance on home video, the arrest quickly became a national sensation. In the months that followed, the establishment media hyped this local event to the point that many Americans considered it to represent police behavior nationwide. This could be any one of 20 major cities or more in the country. It's a time bomb that's ticking under the foundations of America's major cities and under our country itself. To curb police brutality across the nation. The verdict of not guilty for King's arresting officers served as the match that lit the fuse. Instantly, the media implied that the jury was a bunch of redneck racists. We do have a society which is still racist. A mostly white jury in rural Simi Valley cannot have any appreciation of what black people in South Central Los Angeles go through when dealing with the Los Angeles Police Department. There the man was on the ground, covering up toward the end, being beaten in, to insensitivity. And this all-white jury decided that the police were the good guys. Yet the testimony of 58 witnesses and over 200 exhibits presented at the trial revealed to the jury much of what the media kept hidden. King attracted highway patrol attention because he was driving recklessly at speeds of up to 115 miles per hour. His arrest culminated an eight-mile chase in which he cut across numerous lanes of expressway traffic and ran red lights. King was a convicted felon out on parole for armed robbery. There were two other black passengers in King's car, but they cooperated with the officers, were handcuffed, and later released without incident. King was under the influence of drugs and alcohol. King initially ignored police orders to step out of the car. When he did come out, he began acting erratically, dancing around. Then he shook his backside in a lewd gesture at a female police officer. Ignoring officers' demands to get down on the ground, King was tackled by four officers. 
he rose up and threw off the officers. An officer attempted to subdue King with a stun gun, but even the taser darts fired at King failed to keep this out of control 260 pound man down. At this point, the arrest was recorded on home video. Like the jury, you were about to witness the first few seconds that the media carefully avoided broadcasting. King is seen rising up and charging one of the arresting officers. The response of the officers is history. Although people may look at the same evidence and disagree with the verdict, the fact remains the media withheld critical information from the American people in order to make the facts fit the story it wanted to tell. The story implies that local law enforcement is a failed institution and that radical changes are needed. There's certainly nothing new about the drive to federalize control of local police. This is something that goes back decades. The major media have succeeded to a shocking extent in creating an impression for the general public that local police are not to be supported, not to be trusted, they are to be feared. And that, on the other hand, we can trust implicitly in the federal law enforcement agencies who will come into our communities and protect us against the local police. Local police exist to protect the rights and the liberties and the property of the law abiding and they are accountable to the communities that they serve. National police on the other hand would exist to protect the interests of the state and the political elite that controls the state. The age-old tactics of revolutionaries is to orchestrate the illusion of popular support for their agendas. Media cooperation is essential to give life to the illusion. We have had so no. many fooled by the smoke and mirrors they use. The gun lobby is strong, they are organized, and they are scary. Enough of their tactics. They are buying votes with blood money. Marketed as the Million Mom March, a publicity stunt created by gun disarmament advocates takes shape at the nation's capital. Women and their families will push for gun safety in what they call the Million Mom March. Weeks before the march actually took place, the media reports served as invitations for support and participation in the anti-gun agenda. Dan, this mom's march is going to bring enormous pressure on Congress. Now to the emotional issue of gun control in the United States. The nation's capital is preparing for a demonstration against gun violence. Organizing the ostensibly spontaneous march was Donna Dees Thomas's. Americans were told that Dees Thomas's was a mere suburban housewife and political novice who was shocked into action after watching the televised aftermath of a shooting at a daycare center. This portrayal of her background was repeated uniformly throughout the establishment media. Women to watch a suburban mother whose life has been changed by the gun debate, how she became a political activist, where that's led. It's a surprise to her friends and even to her. Here's NBC's Lisa Myers. Donna Dees Thomas is a suburban mom, too busy with her two daughters and a part-time job to pay much attention to politics describes herself as apathetic. No one ever turns out for rallies about gun control. That's what you were told? That's what I was told. Undaunted, she decided to set up the march herself. What's the biggest thing you've ever organized before? Um, a carpool. In reality, Dees Thomas's is a political veteran, a former congressional staffer and publicist for the CBS News. She is a shrewd, well-connected player for the media elite. Despite the prolonged, heavily financed and national anti-gun effort, the Million Mom March fell far short of its name. However, the low attendance didn't stop the media from promoting the illusion of a nationwide demand for more gun laws. The media are trying to create the illusion that there is this massive outpouring of public support for disarming civilians in this country in the name of public safety, but this is an illusion. It's a carefully cultivated illusion, and it's intended to advance an agenda supported and promoted by the elite that controls the media, and that elite is trying to create a world government 
in order to do so be necessary.